In the previous screencast, we prepared the PSGS skeleton that we could return a static page, hello, and then error page, the 404 not found page. And then, as we're going to uh, develop the application, this is going to return large HTML files. Now, we could, of course, put the HTML page, the content of the HTML here, instead of the hello or instead of the 404, but embedding HTML into the Perl code is just creating some nasty uh, piece of code, something that we used to see in the 90s and the early 2000s. Instead of that, we are going to use a separate file, a template file, in order to have all the content. Now, before creating the file, what we're going to do is, uh, instead of calling here return, we'll just call return on the template function and pass it the name of the template that we're loading. And we're going to call the template of the main page index, which is pretty obvious. And then we need to implement this template function. So we can start by uh, implementing just this function. And this it could return the same uh, array reference as earlier. It would be just a simple refactoring. But instead of that, we're going further and we accept the name of the file. It's not the exact name, but it's, uh, it's the main part of the file, index, and then different pages will have different templates, obviously. And then we're going to use this file uh, to load the template. Now, let's create the templates uh, first. We're going to use the template toolkit, templating engine, because this is the probably the most well-known templating toolkit in Perl, though there are like tens or, or maybe hundreds of different templating systems. Usually this templating system is using a separate directory. Many people call it the TT directory. So we can create the directory TT in the root directory of the project. And we're going to also create another directory, an include directory. Because what we're going to do is the each HTML page is built from um, starts with HTML and the header and, and um, the body tag and then the content and then the closing tags. And then the next page has the same thing and almost all the page is, is exactly the same except of the content, of course. Now, we don't want to repeat the, the header part and the footer part in every page because that will mean that if we want to change something that we'll need to change in many files, in many templates. So instead of that, the content, the main part, is going to be in the index template file, index TT is going to be called, and then the header part is going to be in a, in a separate file in the include direct subdirectory, and the footer part, the lower part of the, of the HTML, will be in a separate file again. And then these separate files will be loaded for every HTML, every HTML page, every template. So we create, the, in the TT directory, we create an index.tt file, which is going to be the template. And here we can put any, any co code just to uh, meta cpan, I don't know, SEO, just some text, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to replace it, obviously. The include file, the header is going to have the HTML and head and uh, title search cpan org clone body so that's the the top part of every html page obviously we're going to change this to replace we're going to replace this with this code that we fetch from the real search cpan or, uh, org website but for now i want to, to have the the an additional skeleton or, or just improve the skeleton. Uh, the footer part is what the bottom of every page is just closing the body tag and closing the HTML tag. So we have these two files. We have the template, the main template, and now we need the code to load this template. In order to load this template, we have to, first of all, we have to use the template in the in the code use 
template to load the template module, and then we are create a we create a template object. My dt equals to template and the constructor. And the constructor we are going to get a couple of uh, parameters. The first thing is that it needs to get the include pass. This is the pass where it's going to look for templates. So it's going to get the name of the template file, index.tt in, in the end, and uh, it will need look for this uh, index.tt in some uh, place. Now, this pass is to be relative to the root of our application. So we will have to figure out somehow what is the root of our application. This is going to be in this variable. And in there, there's going to be a tt directory. There is already a tt directory where we have uh, the templates. So that's the first thing. We're going to have to work out what this root is. So I'm putting here my root equals to something. So soon we're going to work on this. And the second parameter is uh, interpolate. Uh, we're going to turn this off. This would allow embedding dollar something into the template that we don't really want. We actually want to make sure that if there's a dollar sign that it will stay a dollar sign there. Post jump would do remove uh, will turn this on. This will um, remove various uh, the new lines from the end of the, the templating templates. Uh, eval pearl eval pearl pearl this allows to evaluation of Perl now. Uh, I'm putting it here one uh, just because I recently found out that I by mistake put it in one. Actually, probably I should put here just zero because I, it's safer not to evaluate any Perl code in there. Then the startup. Normally, normally uh, template toolkit is using the square bracket percentage sign to start uh, to have the, to to allow people to put tags in the template, but we prefer uh, this tag. It looks more HTML-ish. And uh, the end tag, then, is the corresponding end tag, which should be percentage and this sign. And then here comes the two more uh, parameters that will actually tell the template toolkit to include the header file and the footer file. So I. I say pre-process and here I put in the name of the file that needs to be processed beforehand. So this is the header template and the post-process is the name of the file footer.tt that needs to be processed after. Now, as you can see, this is the, the real name of the file, header tt and footer tv, including the impl directory, the include directory, but it's all relative to the tt directory that we have given in the include pass uh, parameter. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that's how we created the constructor of the template toolkit. Now, let's, um, before we go on and process the actual file, let's uh, find out what is in this uh, root directory. So, where is the root directory? So there is a variable called underscore underscore file underscore underscore that contains the name of the current file, which is the the, the name of the the the, the, con, the the file name of the module, and we are going to use relative to that module uh, to calculate the, the location of the directory. So we are going to use the apps pass apps pass function to just to co convert to make sure that it's converted into an absolute pass and then test to return the absolute pass to the file where we, where the code is in and that it's in the lib metacpn slash scopn so we have to go backwards and we can call dear name we have to call it three times actually in order to arrive to the place where we are. So the, dollar, the underscore file, the underscore underscore, will give the name SCOPM. Apps pass will turn it into an absolute pass from the root of your file system. And then the dear name will remove the SCOPM at from the end, leaving just the lib all the, all the way up to the direct project directory, lib metacpan. SCOPM. So the SCOPM is gone. Now this is the, with this their name. The meta CPM is gone with this here name. 
and the lib is the gun with this one. So this is how the root is calculated from the name of the module. And uh, then this way it will be able to find the, the module. And then now the processing itself. So the TT need to be called, the process method need to be called on the TT object. And we have to pass the name of the file. The name of the file, the template file, is the name that we received. So this index. And we also add the TT. And we don't need to add uh, any prefix because the include pass will help us locate the actually uh, template file. And then um, we pass, uh, we could pass some parameters here, but we don't do it right now. And then we'll have to, we can, so if we call process this way without an additional parameter, it will print out the return to the, uh, to the out standard output. But it's not what we want. We want to return it uh, in that three parameter array reference. So instead of that, we are putting here a variable, a reference to a scalar variable that we'll need to declare here earlier. So the process is going to create the HTML, the response HTML, and put in this dollar out variable. And if it doesn't succeed, then well, we call die and uh, call the error method of the TT just to print out uh, the error message. And then here it comes. Instead of this hello, we are sending out the content of out. Now let's see if this works. Switch to the browser and load. And there is a um, oh, it couldn't find the apps pass. Obviously, it couldn't find the apps pass because we have forgotten to, forgotten to load the modules, the module that includes it. So we have the use template actually somewhere down here. We can put put it up where the other use statements are. Then we import from the CWD. Uh, module we import the apps pass and if you are already here then we already also import the from the file base name base name module we are importing the dear name function it would complain otherwise and switch back to the screen now just one thing so here we, this is this is how it looks like when there is some kind of a syntax error in the code uh, in the application and I call it and here, here you can here you are we get back the HTML exactly as uh, we, we wanted except that it's just showing us the HTML not the not the not the view it's showing, showing us the source but let's uh, see the source so this is the, the header part the meta sequence SEO that we put in the main index file index TT file and the body part so it put together everything but it shows it as plain text. And why is that? If we go back to the code, this is because here we set the context type, the content type to text plain. If instead of plain, we put it text HTML and go back to the browser, reload it, then it will create, uh, it will send it back as an HTML and the browser is going to be, sh going to show it as an HTML. And that's it. Uh, now we can commit our uh, changes and we can go on in the next uh, screencast.